It's the Roy Rogers Show. Happy trails to you. It's nice to meet again. Happy trails to you. Until the journey's end. Post Grape Nuts Flakes, the great two-minute energy cereal, brings you the Roy Rogers Show, transcribed on the Double R Bar Ranch, with Pat Brady and the Queen of the West, Day 11. Happy trails to you. Time to ride again. And here he is, in person, the king of the cowboys, Roy Rogers. Well, howdy, folks. You know, being a cowboy, you need lots of energy. That's why Grape Nuts Flakes is the cereal I like for strength and energy. Just two minutes after you eat a big bowl full, that whole wheat energy starts going to work for you. Try Grape Nuts Flakes Buckaroos. They're great. Paul Roberts, 75 years old, but still erect as a western pine, is the richest rancher in Paradise Valley. Stern, reserved, taciturn, Roberts is admired by his neighbors for his unfailing honesty. But today the old pioneer has dropped his reserve, for the noon bus has brought to Mineral City someone Roberts has not seen for 14 years. And now in the Eureka Cafe... (laughs) Hey, Lefty! When you used to toss the ball around in our sandlot games, we all knew you were good, but we never figured one of our local boys would get up to the big leagues. Well, it was just a means to an end, Roy. I couldn't have finished my medical education without the help baseball gave me. I to think that I objected to your career. I think we parted over it. I'll never forgive myself, son. That's all forgotten now, Dad. I've come back to the Saddle Rock spread, and this is where I'm going to stay. Well, I think it's just wonderful for both of you. You've earned a rest, Mr. Roberts, after building the Saddle Rock up to the wonderful ranch it is. And if Dr. Roberts has any time left over, well, another doctor's always welcome in Paradise Valley. Oh, I'm going to give up medicine entirely. What? You bet, Roy. Dad's ranch will keep me plenty busy. Not my ranch, son. Yours. And we'd better leave now and go to the bank and to the lawyers. When you ride through the gates of the Saddle Rock this afternoon, I want it to be legally yours. Well, that's fine, Dad. Deep down in my heart, I've always wanted the place. Well, who's the cowhand in the beat-up Jeep? (laughs) That's Pat Brady, Lefty. You remember him, don't you? Oh, Pat Brady. Sure, sure. I uh, guess I was a little younger than his crowd. Pat's my waiter and Roy's right-hand man now. That is, when he can take the time away from his Jeep. (laughs) Well, I declare it. Nellie Bell seemed perfectly all right when we started out, but when we got to that hill on the other side of the... Oh, hello, Mr. Roberts. Hi, Dale. <laughs> Hi, Pat. Hi, Pat. Pat, this is Dr. Roberts, Mr. Roberts' son. You remember him, don't you? No, I, I don't believe I've had the pleasure. How do you do, Dr. Roberts? Pat, he's Lefty Roberts. Lefty Roberts? Yes. Well, Lefty, you old son of a gun. Well, how are you? Well, I'll declare. You ain't changed a bit since you was a kid in knee pants. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you again, Pat. Lefty Roberts. Why, I never left the radio all the time you was a-pitching in the big leagues. How come you quit? You're still young and you look awful big and strong. My son used baseball as a stepping stone to a medical career, Pat. So I'm mighty proud of him. Well, that sure isn't hard to see. (laughs) You mean you're a doctor now, Lefty? Well, by golly, you know, I wish you could do something about Nellie Bell's cough. Well, I've given up medicine, but I, I might be able to give you a prescription for that Jeep. Do you have a pencil and paper, Miss Evans? Sure. Here you are. And then we've got to be running along, son. Be right with you, Dad. There you are, Pat. This prescription should fix your Nellie Bell. Well, gosh, thanks, Doc. Er, I mean, Lefty. (laughs) I mean, Doc. Come out to the ranch and see you sometime soon, folks. Oh, thanks. Say, Lefty, we're starting the annual fall cattle drive to Terminal City day after tomorrow. Uh, Maybe you'd like to ride along with us. Well, I may be pretty busy for a few days, but, well, we'll see. So long, all of you. So long. Hi. Lefty Roberts. (laughs) He was quite a ball player. Strange that he's given up medicine, though. Yes, it is. 
Say, what does Nellie Bell's prescription say, Pat? Oh, yeah, the prescription. Say, wasn't that nice of him? Let's see now. Run the heap of junk over the steepest cliff you can find. <laughs> well, how do you like that? Of all the fresh guys. <laughs> Remember, son, the ranch is yours now. Lock, stock, and barrel. And you're the boss. You run things just as you see fit. Well, that's swell, Dad. I'm glad to take the load off your shoulders. Oh, uh, there's one thing I wanted to ask you before you go to bed. Yeah? Uh, Roger said this afternoon that the ranchers were making the fall drive to Terminal City day after tomorrow. That's right. And if you remember, it's quite a sight. Sometimes there's as many as 5,000 head in all. Yeah, I remember. Uh, how much are you charging them to ford the river and drive their stock across the ranch these days, Dad? Why, son, they don't use a saddle rock shortcut anymore. Oh, the ranchers got together five, six years ago and put in a big wooden bridge across the river four miles up. Yeah. Oh, yes, it saves them a lot of time and gets the cattle to Terminal City probably five pounds heavier per critter. Well, then, uh, we lose quite a nice piece of revenue, don't we? Why, no, son. No, I used to charge the drovers just what I figured was the actual damage to the range as they crossed over. Maybe a dollar a head. But, Dad, you could have made real money. If they hadn't been able to use the Ford, they would have had to go clear up through Comanche Pass. It would have taken them four or five days, wouldn't it? Yes, yes, and they would have lost a lot of cattle besides taking weight off them. Well, I was just wondering. That bridge sounds like a good idea, though. I'll uh, have to ride past it when I go into Terminal City tomorrow. Oh, do you have to go into town tomorrow, son? Yes, there are several matters I have to attend to in a hurry. If that's the way you want it, I'm sure I have a buyer for you, Dr. Roberts. Sure. I don't mind taking a loss as long as it's strictly a cash deal. The Saddle Rock's a mighty valuable piece of property. Well, Dad's tired of it, and I wasn't cut out to be a rancher. You see that the buyer has the cash here day after tomorrow, and I'll be in to transfer the papers. Of course, it's a lot of dynamite. I don't see that it's any of your business as long as I'm paying for it. I was only wondering, mister. Well, if you must know, I'm the foreman of a construction crew that's heading for a job south of the border. I'll have to do a lot of blasting. <laughs> Whoa there, boy. Whoa, whoa. Steady now, you big bruiser. This won't take me long. Uh, this seems to be the main beam. Set one charge here. And the one on the other side. There. So, we'll just light this one. And this one. Now, oh, come on, you. Up now, boy, up. Off this bridge if you know what's good for both of us. All right, keep going, keep going. Those timbers will spray like matches in a hurricane. There. That does it. Now we'll see if these yokels can get their 5,000 cattle to Terminal City without using my Ford and crossing my ranch. $50 ahead, that's $250,000 that I hadn't even counted on. Well, this adventure's mighty exciting, hey, listeners? And here's something every bit as exciting. The new Roy Rogers, King of the Cowboys, pop-out trading cards. Offered you by Post Serials, free of extra cost. There are 36 different pictures in this wonderful series. Real-life pictures of Roy, Dale, Trigger, Bullet, and Pat in exciting action. And here's why these cards are so extra special. You see, the main part of each picture pops right out, easy as you please. You have lifelike two-dimensional figures that stand up by themselves. Great for decorating your room or club headquarters. And don't forget, you send no box tops, no money. These Roy Rogers cards are free of extra cost. At your grocers, just look for the trading card packages of these famous Post cereals. Crinkles, Raisin Bran, Grape Nuts Flakes, Bran Flakes, Sugar Crisp, and Post Toasties. Each package brings you one of these wonderful cards. Imagine the terrific display you'll have with all 36. So hurry. 
Be the first in your gang to get your Roy Rogers King of the Cowboys pop-out trading cards. Get a good supply of your favorite post cereals tomorrow and start collecting and swapping your Roy Rogers cards right away. You'll have to take your herd across at the Saddle Rock Ford, Fred. It'll take weeks to build this bridge again. It certainly is a mess, isn't it, Roy? How could it just cave in in the night? I don't think it caved in, Dale. I think it was dynamite. Oh, who would do a thing like that? Well, it's hard to tell. Can't see that anyone has anything to gain by it. Well, it's lucky you discovered it early, Roy. By this time, your hand should have the double R bar herd over the fort and crossing the saddle rock spread. Yeah, I hope Pat and Nellie Bell are spreading the word fast enough so that the other herds don't pile up anywhere. Hey, Roy! Dale! There's trouble ahead! Whoa, Nellie Bell! Hey, Pat! What are you and Bullet so excited about? Quiet there, Bullet. Uh, oh, boy, I'm upset. Bullet's upset. And we got reason to be. You know, there must be 2,000 head of cattle waiting on this side of the ford, and Lefty Roberts won't let them cross. What's this? Well, the ranchers have offered to pay them for crossing like they used to, haven't they? Listen, they didn't even get a chance to offer. Lefty beat them to the punch, and he wants $50 a head. $50 a head? Why, that's ridiculous. There's not that much profit in a steer. Pat, you're sure Lefty isn't just kidding. <laughs> he may be kidding, but he's got four or five men armed with rifles backing him up. We'd better get up there pronto and see if we can straighten out the trouble. You know, the cattle is awful restless and the ranchers is awful mad. You know, they're talking about shooting it out with Lefty's men and going through anyway. Oh, no, we can't let that happen. No, shooting wouldn't solve anything. If Lefty Roberts doesn't know any more about the code of the West than to try to take advantage of his neighbors... Well, we'll just have to explain things to him. Well, I'm going to handle Lefty a little differently this time. There's something I want to find out. I can't imagine that a nice old gentleman like Mr. Roberts could have a son as mean as Lefty. That's just what I can't imagine. Hey, look at the way he's got them arm muzzlers strung around here. Yeah. Well, Lefty's coming out to meet us again. Yeah, he sure ain't gonna let us talk to his dad. Oh, well, there you. Well, what about it, Rogers? Did your friends decide to meet my price? No, Lefty, we can't do it. We all stand to lose money, and we count on this fall's market to keep us going all winter. All right, then. Take your steers over the mountains or let him try to swim where the bridge fell down. It'll cost you $50 a head to cross here, and that's an ultimatum. Well, I'm delivering the ultimatum this time, Lefty. We'll give you $5 a head and we start crossing in the morning. Is that so? You don't want to risk gunplay, do you? If the ranchers want to shoot it out with my guards, it's all right with me. You're making yourself mighty unpopular in these parts. The more I see of these parts, the less they interest me. But while I'm here, the law's on my side. You know, in this case, Lefty, I'm just liable to take the law in my own hands. You'd better change your tune and change it fast. Don't reach for that gun, Rogers. Look out, Roy! Roy, what are you... Because you're covered. Well, so I am. <laughs> I thought you were supposed to be so fast on the draw. Well, I could have drilled you three times before you stopped fumbling with your holsters. Now, suppose you get back across the river where you belong. All right, Lefty. If that's the way you want it. Come on, Pat, Dale. That was some ultimatum, Rogers. Roy, you did make a move for your gun back there before Lefty drew on you, didn't you? Sure I did. Roy, what are you up to? I've never seen you start to draw before another man did, and I've never seen another man outdraw you. I let Lefty do that on purpose. I wanted to find out something. Well, for heaven's sake... What'd you find out? Well, for a fellow who's been a baseball player and a doctor for 14 years, Lefty's pretty good with whipping out a pair of six-shooters. And what he said about while I'm here, I don't think he's Lefty Roberts at all. What? Well, my goodness, Roy, why don't we get the sheriff and have him arrested? Well, we can't do that until we have proof. And Pat and I can't leave here. We need every available man to keep these herds separated and quiet. So, they'll... I guess you'd better leave Buttermilk with Pat and drive Nellie Bell back to town. <laughs> 
If you say so, Roy, but I sure hate to trust Nellie Bell with a woman driver. Well, I can probably get there faster than Nellie Bell at that. What do you want me to do, Roy? Phone Dr. Paul Roberts, Jr. in Rochester, New York. If he's there, tell him to take the first plane west. And then I want you to drive to Terminal City, talk to all the real estate men and everyone who sells dynamite, and let us know what you find out by daybreak. But it's true, Mr. Roberts. I talked to your son by phone. The man here is planning to sell your ranch, and there's plenty of evidence that he dynamited the bridge. But he looks like my boy, and he remembers everything I've written him since he left home 14 years ago. This man struck up an acquaintance with your son years ago because they looked so much alike. He's practically been his shadow ever since, and all that time he was just working to steal this ranch from you. The real lefty will explain it all to you when he gets here today. Then we're up against a dangerous man. I'll go out and tell the men that scoundrel has guarding the property to throw down their rifles and let the cattle cross. And I'll drive across the ford and tell Roy, and he'll take care of this masquerader. Oh, he will, Willie. Don't reach for your gun, Miss Evans. I'll take him. Oh! And don't struggle. There. I'm going to thrash you within an inch of your life. Oh, a tough old geezer, huh? Well, this will stop you. Mr. Roberts, oh. look out! You may have been a strong cookie in your day, but you're too old to stand up under a pistol whipping. Roy! That's just stupid, Miss Evans. Rogers is on the other side of the river, and there's nobody in the ranch house. I know who you are, and I know what you're trying to do. Yeah, and I heard everything you told Dad. That isn't going to keep me from making the haul I've planned on all these years. If gunfighting starts, every one of the ranchers will be aiming at you first. There isn't going to be gunplay. I've already withdrawn the armed guards, sent them all back to the bunkhouse to sleep. I'm going to let the cattle start to cross the river. When the fort is full of them, the leaders are going to be blown clear out of the water by a dynamite charge. They'll start the biggest stampede ever known in the West. Why, you beast. If 5,000 heads stampede, it'll take the men all day to calm them down and round them up again. Sure, and the herds will be so mixed up that it'll take them another week to separate them. They'll have no choice but to drive them across as one herd, sell them that way, and split up what they can get out of it. And they'll have no choice but to pay me $50 a head. I'll find some way to stop you. Oh, no, you won't. I'll take you and the old man to the gully where I've hidden the mechanism I'm using to set off the dynamite charge. There's an old silo there. And it won't take me any time at all to set another charge that will blow it up at the same time I dynamite the cattle in the river. <laughs> How about them? How about them? How about those grape nuts flakes? How about those grape nuts flakes? How about them? How about them? How about those grape nuts flakes? They are so good, good for you too. The two minute energy works for you. So how about them? How about them? How about grape nuts flakes? Yep. How about those grape nuts flakes? Take an old hands advice, partners. Tomorrow, when you roll out of your bunk, corral a bowl full of that great energy given cereal, grape nuts flakes. Grape Nuts Flakes are called the Great Two-Minute Energy Cereal because two minutes after you polish off a bowlful, their powerhouse whole wheat energy starts to go to work for you. That's the kind of quick energy you fellers and gals need. You'll go for Grape Nuts Flakes sugar-roasted flavor. It's delicious. So ask Mom to get you Grape Nuts Flakes, the two-minute energy cereal. Look for Roy's picture on the front of the package. <laughs> The man Paul Roberts thought was his son is an imposter, a heartless, desperate criminal. And as the first streaks of dawn flecked the eastern sky, Roy and Pat once more crossed the ford onto the Saddle Rock Ranch, a milling cattle behind them, restless and eager to start their journey. I can't imagine what's happened to Dale. She should have been back by now. Oh, I can't hold the men off much longer, Roy. Well, Lefty's evidently called off his guards for the time being at least. I'll go on up to the ranch house and try once more to make a reasonable deal with him. Oh, why don't you just let me do the talking this time, Roy? No, Pat. In fact, I don't even want you to come with me. What? I want you to follow those two wires on the ground. Well, my gosh, Roy, there are two wires. Hey, they come right out of the river and seem to lead off over that little hill yonder. Now, what would a couple of wires be doing there? Well, I don't know, but we'd certainly better find out. 
And after the experiences you've had with Nellie Bell, you qualify as an expert on wires. Oh, Dale's got Nellie Bell. Oh, Jiminy Graces. I hope nothing's happened to her. Well, I hope not, too. Only I'm talking about Dale. I'll get going, Pat. Hup trigger. Come on, bullet. <laughs> Old man Roberts ought to be up and around even though Lefty's still asleep. I can't imagine Lefty sleeping when I told him we were going to start to cross at sunrise. All right, Bullet, what are you trying to tell me? Well, quiet now. Hey, you act like you've picked up a scent that you know. What's this? Hmm, tire tracks and Nellie Bell made them. And if Dale stopped here and then drove off, it's mighty strange that we didn't meet her at the river. And if neither Lefty nor Mr. Roberts is in the ranch house... Come on, Trigger. Bullet. We've got to follow those jeep tracks. Now, you just stay there, Buttermilk. As long as I'm off you, I'm more comfortable following those wires afoot. Oh, darn. The boys must have decided to start the cattle across. Sure hope Roy makes a deal with that there lefty feller before he calls out his army. Golly. This hill's kind of steep. There. Hey. Hey. What's that guy doing in the gully? My gosh. It's Lefty Roberts. And hey, there's Nellie Bell. Parked over there by that old silo. Hey, Lefty. What are you up to? Oh, it's you, Brady. Who gave the order for those cattle across the river? I don't know. But maybe they just started going of their own accord. Roy Rogers is looking for you. He is, is he? Well, he's too late. What do you mean he's too late? Hey, hey, what are you doing with that wooden box with a plunger on it? I'm pressing the plunger and I'm dynamiting those cattle right out of the river. Oh, you better not do it, Lefty. Here comes Roy. He's still too late because here goes. Roy, hurry up. Who, who, who? Whoa there, Trigger. Hey, what's happening, Pat? Roy, see that thing that the lefty's got down there? That's a box to set off a dynamite charge in the river, and he's just pressed the plunger. Hey, he's blowing up the cattle. Well, he was trying to, all right, only I cut the wires. Good boy, Pat. And now I'm going to cut down Lefty. Hey, Roy, look at Bullet. He's heading straight for that old silo, and Lefty's drawing his guns. Stay where you are, Rogers, or I'll drill you. With what? Roy, you knocked both them pistols right out of his hands. See what's in that silo, Pat? I'm going to take care of Lefty. I don't need guns to handle you, Rogers. Come on. Oh, so you lead with your left hand and punch with your right. You're not a southpaw after all. Maybe I'm not, but I can punch you, silly. Better men than you have tried it. Now let's see how you... Take it, boy. Now, we're going to find out who's in that silo. And then we're going to find out just who you are. Because I know for sure you're not Lefty Roberts. There's enough evidence to send him up for the rest of his life, Dr. Roberts, particularly with you staying for the trial. Well, I'm staying longer than that, Dale. Dad's recovering in nice shape, but, well, he's lonesome, and he ought to have someone to help him manage the Saddle Rock. And I guess the Paradise Valley folks could use another doctor, couldn't they? We could sure use one like you, Lefty, and a Southpaw pitcher will come in mighty handy next summer, too. Yeah, <laughs> you bet. Say, Doc, maybe Jeeps are a little... Out of your line, but uh, my Nellie Bell's got a sort of a cough. <laughs> I was wondering what you'd prescribed in a case like that. You know, Roy and I were talking about that cough when you drove up, Pat. Yeah, and the doctor suggested if there was a high enough cliff in the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, now, wait a minute. Which hand did he say that with? <laughs> That's all for now, folks. This is Roy Rogers saying to all of you from all of us, goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. See you next week. Happy trails to you Until we meet again mm -hmm.
The Roy Rogers Show was brought to you tonight by Post Grape Nuts Flakes, the great two-minute energy cereal. Grape Nuts Flakes is the cereal Roy likes best for strength and energy. Look for the picture of Roy and Trigger on the front of the package. The Roy Rogers Show can be heard again next week at this same time with Pat Brady, Dale Evans, and the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. An Art Rush production written and directed by Fran Van Hardisfeld with music by Milton Charles. Remember what Roy Rogers says, Post Sugar Crisp is the cereal treat that's fun to eat. Roy's right, fellas and gals, as a cereal it's dandy, with milk or cream. For snacks it's so handy, or you can eat it like candy right out of the box. Post Sugar Crisp is excitingly new, deliciously different. Nourishing puffed wheat, candy coated with honey and sugar. Ask Mom to get Post Sugar Crisp in the big red, white, and blue box with the three bears on the front tomorrow. This is Art Ballinger speaking for Post Grape Nuts Flakes. Stay tuned for the latest news brought to you by Log Cabin Syrup.